Section 18C, proposed, uh, proposed reformation or changes to the, that part of the Racial Discrimination Act. For it or against it, how far? Yeah, I think we should abolish it. Uh, I was in the parliament, I mentioned Gary Johns and his role in the caucus. I was under the assumption, Michael Lavash put this through a, a Queenslander in, in 1995 when he was the Attorney General. I was under the assumption 18C was there to stop uh, you know, someone grabbing hold of a megaphone in Martin Place, Sydney and yelling out all racist slurs, you know, big uh, outrageous acts of, of, of public bigotry. And if you'd said to me back then that oh, what it was really going to do was uh, drag a newspaper columnist like Andrew Bolt before the courts, it was going to uh, persecute a, a cartoonist, a cartoonist, someone yeah. who just draws things in a newspaper, and it was going to harass these university students in Brisbane, I would have thought, well, that just sounds ridiculous. Why would we be passing a law for those purposes? So uh, 18C has been used for reasons and purposes that weren't part of the original promise. And it's uh, an example of where the Human Rights Commission has grabbed hold of this, uh, not always expecting an outcome, but the process becomes the punishment. That's right. And I think the high point of this is what happened to the university students. One in particular, Callum Thwaites, hadn't done anything. It was a, there was an attempt to impersonate him on the Facebook chat, and, and then he was dragged before the courts. Um, when in, in practice, in the evidence, he hadn't actually participated in any of the activities. He hadn't gone to the he hadn't gone to the indigenous computer lab, and he hadn't made any comments in their little uh, Facebook conversation about it. So he was completely innocent of anything, and, and and had to change career direction, and had legal costs, and dragged through the courts. A terrible, terrible thing for a young man to endure. And I saw Callum Thwaites at the Freedom Conference, and I said, Callum, you, you've been persecuted in a way. That makes me feel ashamed, not only of the university system, the Human Rights Commission, but the whole notion of Australian democracy. And, and, and what's happened to you is a terrible example of injustice. How many Labor Party MPs, federal and state, have contacted you privately to express their sympathy and, and their support in your desperate circumstances? And he said, none. None, not one. Hmm. And I just found that the saddest commentary on the modern Labor Party that, you know, we used to have a philosophy, there's just one person being done over by the power of government, we'd be with them. We would stand solid with them on the principles of fairness. He's a young man, his whole life had been turned upside down. He hadn't done anything of any kind in any of this. And none of them got in contact with him to say, we're with you 100% and, and we want to support you. So 18C has been misused. There's no need for it. There's, there's state government laws that cover racial abuse on buses and public transport. You've got the state laws, you don't need the federal one. It's been totally misused by Triggs and the Human Rights Commission, so abolish the whole thing. Yep. yep. <laughs> plus, plus abolish the Human Rights Commission. We don't need them either. Yeah. <laughs> they don't defend human rights, they abuse them. Yeah, it's been turned into a weapon. It has. It's, it's become a word I came across recently, lawfare, mm. where the laws are being weaponised and turned against the citizens that they're intended to protect. Yeah, and the Bill Leake case is a classic example of political correctness out of control, because I've always thought the least serious part of a newspaper is the cartoon. You know, it's, <laughs> just, it's just a drawing. And at the end of the day, he, he, he did a cartoon that, that reflected on the fact, the reality, that there are some Indigenous fathers who are bad dads. I mean, this is true. It's true in all communities, but there's a concentrated problem in the Northern Territory. Indigenous fathers who, who, who aren't very good role models for their sons. He drew a cartoon to that effect. It reflected a reality, uh, a reality some people mightn't want to acknowledge or they, they find upsetting, but it was a fundamental truth in our society. And uh, Tim Soutfomasan, the Racial uh, Discrimination Commissioner, went out and solicited complaints. So mm. they were going to be not only the, the prosecuting um, um, uh, group, they were going to be the jury as well. They went out and solicited complaints against Bill Leake for a yeah. cartoon that um, reflected the truth. Him, uh, yeah, 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 they declared him guilty before the process started. The process was the punishment and it drove him to an early grave. All the pressure and, and stress of that. So it's a terrible, terrible thing that that's happened. And the best advertisement yet for why the whole Human Rights Commission should be abolished. Yeah. Is there a political path to doing that, do you think? Yeah, get the numbers in the parliament and pass the legislation. Tony Abbott promised it in 2013. Abbott ended up, you know, part of the Be Nice Brigade. He thought he could be Prime Minister for all Australians. Well, the left attacked him even more mm. and uh, he should have fulfilled that promise and, and put the legislation up and got it through. 
All right, moving on. Another issue that people wanted to um, hear us talk about tonight was Penny Wong's comments that um, the separation of church and state means that people with religious opinions shouldn't participate in public debates. Well, she's a hypocrite. She was saying that in relation to the same-sex marriage debate, but this question of the uh, petition or the curtain at Auburn Pool, which is local government implementation of Sharia law, a complete mixing of church and state. I mean, the, the curtain went up to enforce the rule of the Quran that, that, that's, uh, that men can't look at the, uh, the, the, the exposed flesh of women, of Islamic women. It was an enforcement of Sharia law by the local government authority, a complete mixing of church and state, and she said nothing about it. I don't think any federal MP has said anything about it. Jackie Lambie's made some noise about Sharia law. She hasn't said anything about it. So you've got a local government authority in Sydney enforcing Sharia law at a public swimming pool where we've always mixed together and people of all walks of life and backgrounds have always you know, had full access to the pool. It's always been a wonderfully open, egalitarian Australian institution. You've got Sharia law being enforced at uh, this uh, public swimming pool and Wong hasn't said boo about it. So I, I think if she's going to say that, um, she needs to enforce it across the board instead of the area where it's convenient to her. What she's trying to say is that people of religious belief who don't support same-sex marriage should butt out of the debate. Well, that's not true either. I mean, it's a valid way of expressing yourself in a democracy. If because of your valid religious faith you don't support gay marriage, well, stand up and say that. And I think the churches should be more vocal in putting their uh, point of view. Agreed. Yeah, so, it's, it's, there's so many issues that keep coming back to this common thread of free speech is, can we modernise Islam? Well, not until we're prepared to have an honest, fearless, unoffendable conversation. What's the good parts, what's the bad parts? Well, we can't know if we're not allowed to talk about it. So how do we change the bad parts if we can't identify them? How do we fight against terrorism and, and get people to integrate? and from every ethnic and cultural background be welcomed and embraced into Australian culture. Well, if we can't criticise the bad parts of negative you know, aspects of, of other cultures, then how do we embrace the good parts and, and leave out the bad parts? Well, it's got to be leadership. I mean, the power of leadership in these areas would be astounding. And what we've got now is, is, is a vacuum, the be nice attitudes. Now, just go back to the last election campaign. Malcolm Turnbull had the Ramadan dinner with the Islamic leadership and he was there on the table with Waleed Ali and Susan Carlin and, and, and Abdel Magid and the like. Now imagine if he stood up at that Ramadan dinner and said, Waleed Ali, we've got this problem here with the, t the wording in the Quran which encourages violence in certain sections. You've said that the holy book is a work in progress. We need you to stand up and, and, and lead a debate with these religious leaders gathered here at uh, Kirribilli House as to how the Quran can be modernised. We've got a problem that certain young radicals are looking at these words in the Quran, taking a literal interpretation of them and going out and committing acts of terrorism. We can do a great public service for public safety if the holy book was modernised for Australian purposes to say these sections are, 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 are deleted, they're no longer applicable, you've said it's a work in progress, here you are, you're a leader of your community, we've, we've given you a, a national platform as a nation, get up there and lead. Get up and lead this conversation with these religious leaders. Now imagine that, imagine the power of Malcolm Turnbull saying that, that simple three minute um, speech at a gathering like that, instead of just pretending everything's rosy in the garden, you know, we all love each other, we're all wonderful, you know, everything's going to be fine. So you know, you've got to get out there and be realistic about it and put people in a position where you're, you're, you're encouraging them to, to do the leadership job that's in the public interest. So uh, it's that vacuum of leadership that's the problem. And, and these guys just won't have a go. Thanks for watching. If you really enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Have a look at this great video next and check out the website for even more interesting articles and episodes later.